meeting on January 27th started? Sure, I'll make motion. a motion. All right, second it. Second. All righty, all righty. Um, all right, let's go through item A, the uh, approval of the minutes from last Wednesday's meeting. Any questions or comments? Nope. All righty. A motion to approve the minutes. Second. All right, item B. Do we have any public comments, Derek, from tonight? No, we do not. All righty. Boy, we're, we're going fast for Mike's sake. All right, that must be Mr. Bailey's up. Number three, discussions of fire department needs. Go ahead, Rich, you got the floor. Uh, our first, can you hear me, by the way? Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, our first uh, our first request is for 50000 for funds for architectural design for Firehouse 2 Edition. Um, I have a short uh, uh, thing here. We're currently does not have locker rooms, toilet rooms, or showers to be used by our women. Uh, the firefighter, the fire service nowadays, uh, luckily, is incorporating a lot more women. And this firehouse just is absolutely not set up for that. Um, I'll look for an architect that will expand <clears throat> on the current electrical, mechanical, and plumbing systems, include our ideas and, and take on his. Uh, in short, we're just not in compliance in this firehouse for providing equal access and opportunity to our female firefighters. Um, again, it, it's, it's more I'm looking for the 50,000 to get the architect, arc of the architect to uh, design something for us to incorporate bathrooms, locker rooms, and uh, showers. Is, is that a quote you got from him that he wants as a down payment or you, you just? No, no, I went through Sally and asked her what a, you know, not knowing what an architect would cost. And she had said that that would be a, a reasonable request. Okay. Um, do you need to add on to your building? Or are you just talking doing some movings of walls, adding bathrooms, or no? It would be adding on to the building. So it's going to be a good sized project. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I mean, I understand the finances. This is just to get the ball rolling, get the ideas, get the plans down. Yeah. And then yep. next year, knock you over a little bit. Okay. <laughs> uh, any questions, anyone? All right. Item two. Item two is the exhaust extractors. Uh, we've talked about this about five years ago, if you guys remember. Um, I actually have brought in some vendors. Uh, there, I'm asking for forty-five thousand, by the way, for this particular project. I think that's well in the order that we can get it done. And it's basically going to take all the exhaust out of the apparatus bay floors. Uh, upon responding and returning from alarms. Um, I have brought, as I said, I have brought some vendors in. Uh, I'm not even gonna tell you what they think it's worth, but you know, 100,000 here, 110,000 here. I, that's more for new construction. You know, if we are building a new firehouse, yeah, that's the thing we have to do. I yep. think for 15,000 a firehouse, we can get some exhaust fans built in and uh, you know, definitely do what we need to do. Uh, so that's for three firehouses and obviously a kind of a safety issue. Um, Absolutely. Safety and health. Is this more important than item one at this point? I know item one you'd like to do, but this sounds like it'd be more of a priority. Yeah, yeah like equal, but I guess, it, you know, health okay. and safety is always, you yeah. know, has to be at the top. You know, the the architectural design is something, I mean, we have to do. There's just not, you know, with the, the changes in weather and everything, we do a lot of standbys, you know, which incorporates our women firefighters as well. And it's just, it's just not there. You know, it's, it's basically a room with a toilet. Okay. All righty. Any questions or comments, committee members? I'm all set. All right. I'm at right now. Okay. Is that it for tonight, Rich? That is it, my friend. Excellent. Thank you very much. We appreciate your uh, time. Thank, thank you, you for Rich. your time. We'll take it easy. Uh, you got it. We'll talk to you. All right.
All right, we're on to item D, discussing of parks and rec needs. And who will be handling that? That would be me, Kathy Bagley. Ah, okay. Hey, <laughs> hey Kathy. How are you? I'm back again. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I think many of these projects are going to be familiar to you. They've been on our list. So I thought I would quickly go, just go through each one and, and stop if you have questions about them. Would that work? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Just go through each item and then we'll, we'll stop you if we have any questions or comments. Perfect. And um, I'm, I'm looking at our, I, I submitted our Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, their priority list. So it was a pro their project needs list. So I'm going to go right down the list, and it starts with um, over at the Nature Center. Um, we have our sidewalks and concrete ramp, the ADA ramp that are right in front of the building, and um, that is a project that we've been looking to do because that's be that is definitely the concrete is breaking up both on the sidewalk and the ramp, and that we estimate at twenty five thousand dollars. Next up is the, uh, this is new this year. This is the community center parking lots. Um, through Derek, the engineering department has gone out and done a review of the parking lots and has determined that there are some very areas that patching no longer is going to work. They actually need to be repaired. And they've actually identified those areas and developed a cost estimate of 65,000. We actually, if you could picture the community center, there's actually three lots. The main lot, uh, the one that goes in the side and then the one in the back. And they've identified those areas. And that's to do the whole? It's not the whole parking lot. It's to do particular um, areas that are outlined in the blue. I say, oh, thank you, Derek. I say, okay, gotcha. It, what what so kind of repair is it? Is it removal and replace? Yeah, they de they definitely have to do excavation and then um, repave it. And that sure that, six, that sixty five thousand you're asking for will do all of those areas. Yeah, Mike, I think, that, yeah, I, that I can answer that. That is. Um, not necessarily full depth in all areas. Um, some areas we could just take off the pavement, I think regrade and repave. Um, okay. So, so for the most part, yeah, we felt that we came up with a couple of different prices. One was a lesser cost for uh, less of a repair. And this is more something that'll, because the parking lot in general is in pretty good shape. It's just these areas that are really falling apart. So we're gonna address them now to buy us enough time till we get to a point when the whole parking lot is going to need to be redone somewhere down the road. All right, so you, you saw cut, you yeah, saw cut these out and then. Okay. Yeah, these blue lines represent the areas that the price reflects. Okay. All right. Could I just ask, uh, so is yeah. this materials and labor and would the labor be contracted out or is it to uh, our town staff who would do the repairs? Estimate was based on our consultant, our on-call contractor doing the work. We have a contract with them through this year that has pricing for this type of uh, repair. Okay, thank you. Next up uh, is item three, the Greenfield softball field fence. This is uh, definitely, um, one of our top priorities. Uh, we've had Little League asking for the fence and we've been repairing it. And it's, um, it's, it's time to replace the fabric. And this would be to replace the fabric. We do have the, um, we did get a quote from a contractor that we could leave the poles in and replace the fabric. And the cost is $53,000. I was talking with Little League today. We had a meeting with them about oh, hopefully the spring season and um, they had asked, they knew that they also have another item on here for their item number 7A is their Little League Classic Field. 
to do renovation and drainage work. That's a big ticket item of $170,000. And we have $20,000, $25,000 set aside for that project. And they wondered if that could be used as part of the, uh, an allocation for the funds to try and get the Little League field fence done. So that would just be something I'd ask you to consider. It's gonna take us a while to get to that $170,000. And they wondered if it was possible to take that 25, put it against a 53, and then I'd only have to ask for 28,000. All right. So go to item number four. It's our community center lobby and the, it's the flooring in the main hallway. Uh, we do, we are looking to replace that. That's a cost of about $35,000. And we're looking to get rid of the, con the carpet in that area and do, um, do both carpet tiles. And um, we'd like to look at the polished brushed concrete in that area, it gets so much use. And we think that would be a more long lasting and endurable, a durable uh, surface for the community center. I, I keep going, I'll be happy to keep yeah, going. Keep going, I'll keep going, sure. um, The Number five is, is keeps us going on our basketball, tennis court. We get money, we try to get money every year to go in and fix the cracks, resurface the courts. So now we're up to the Farms Village courts on Cedar Street and the old reservoir, both basketball courts. And this, this funding of 35,000 would get us to get those two courts renovated. No, and we just finished um, Standish and Greenfield basketball courts and Standish tennis courts. So those all came out really good over the past um, season. Uh, late fall, we were able to do those. Number six is uh, every year I'm looking just to add more parking in the Millwoods parking lot. That's a $70,000 cost and we already have almost 35,000 set aside for that. What's that for? Just uh, yeah. more- That would be to put a, a stone dust parking lot adjacent yeah. to the Millwoods tennis courts. Oh, you want, okay. Oh, 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 I got you on that side. Okay. okay. Yeah, on that side. Yep. Yeah, okay. Kind of where everybody pulls in off the grass. Okay. Item 7A, I, I mentioned it earlier that it's the, um, uh, the Little League Classic Field in Mill Woods. We have a good plan for renovation and drainage done by the uh, engineering department. It is a big cost. There's a lot of water that goes on that field. And um, we've tried over the years to do little things to fix it, keep the water away. And uh, engineering did a design for us and a cost based on that. And this also incorporates 7B, which is uh, softball fields three and four that are up there on that plateau also. And it's, they also get a lot of water so there's a part B that is another 170,000 to do that whole upper piece to handle the water, get the water to go drain in the right places. And Derek's put the map up there just so you could see the locations. Uh -huh. And then item number eight is the Solomon Wells house. Uh, over the years, we've been putting money into the house through the consultants report. Uh, we did all the roofs recently and now it's time to look at the exterior repairs. And this is an estimate by the, um, by the consultant that came in and looked at the whole facility. And we currently, it's a $204,000 repairs out there. We have 50,000 set aside so the ask is $154,000. Do you need all that money before the repairs will start? 
Um, you could probably do, uh, you could probably identify um, and do that, phase that in different exterior repairs that need to be done. Certainly you could look at it in a phased in approach. Okay, thank you. Number nine is the high school baseball field renovation. We've had this on the books. It'd be the next field we'd also like to look at. Um, it's just every, every you know, five to 10 years, you have to go in and look at some of these fields and the high school baseball field is one of them to look at. And that's a contractor price of a renovation for $75,000. You know, we brought this up last year and again, it, just me personally, it's hard to, hard to pump any money into an $80 million project when again, why wouldn't this been done during the renovations? I understand it wasn't part of the budget, but you had all the equipment out there and all you needed is the material to fix it. And it got more of a frustrating comment than anything, Kathy. I know it's not at you, but it, in general, you know, we just did a brand new beautiful school and now we're asking for more money towards this school, which it's hard for me to agree on something like that. Just, you know, but I understand my, my son played baseball. I understand the condition of the baseball field, but again, you figured it would have been done during the massive renovations when they had all the bulldozers out there and everything else. But anyhow, well, let, me, let, well, let me respond to that. If I may, yeah. as the chair yeah, of the renovation, uh, there is no state reimbursement uh, for the fields and it would have been out of the purview of the building committee and our architect and project manager to have done work on that. So uh, to your point, could it have been done? Um, yes, but it would have been a different body and a different funding source that would have been responsible for that. All right, and you, and you know the, you, yeah, and you know how things work more than I do in this town. I'm just saying that just thinking outside and even Mike, who's in construction, I mean, would probably tell you that number would be half the cost. Again, because we had all the, equipment out there and everything else we just needed material but i understand christine what you're saying to me and how how things work but it just again put money into a brand new project like that after 80 million dollars i understand okay mm -hmm. thank you kathy number number 10 is uh, as you know i always put in the samuel wells house parking lot <laughs> and uh number 11 the millwood soccer field i put both of those in and partially when I talk with the park board, we always identify them in our, um, our request for the upcoming year because we're also always looking for grant opportunities. And one of the key things they always ask is, is this in your capital improvement plan? So um, we do continue to identify those projects. All right. Any other questions or comments for Kathy? The nature center sidewalks, they can't be done under the regular town sidewalk program. It's considered a bigger project. Yeah, our, our funding is limited for the sidewalk program. Um, so with this being a separate project, uh, it would just make more sense because Usually my operating for sidewalk repairs are only is only about 35,000. So this would chew up a good portion of that. And then, okay. as you know, I come to you for uh, ADA ramp uh, compliance and that's a separate yeah. source. Yep. So okay. with a project this large, I was telling Kathy, it would really be better to come through CIP. But, the, but along with that, we might look at the sidewalk, the town sidewalk contractor to actually do the project. So, they're, so um, they originally gave us the quote. Alrighty. I have uh, one comment, John, if I could. Yeah. Uh, Kathy, in your discussions about the uh, community center parking lot, has anybody talked about improving the lighting out there? That that parking lot is pretty bad at night. I was uh, I generally end up there at election time, and you can't see where you're walking, so. Granted, the, park, the pavement is in bad shape, but if you could see where you were walking, it might help. That's, that's true. <laughs> anybody mentioned anything about getting that on the list? or? Well, the, the lighting has been upgraded over the years. So there have been, there have been um, uh, LED lighting has been put around the outside of that building. 
and we have looked at putting, they did do a lighting study when they went into the LED lights and, and with, they said with the floodlights that are there and with the, the soft lighting from the side that it should be. Uh, we've always thought it was dark. I would agree with you, Tom, and we've tried to look at ways. And we, we have to be careful because we have neighbors on two of those sides. And if we get it too bright, we get a lot of complaints from them too, even when they try to shield the lights. Yeah, fair we enough. certainly look at it again, but they did upgrade the lighting. And I think the town did it through a grant with the electric company and stuff. And they went around and it, part of it was done with the um, street lights too, that they, they changed all the bulbs out and everything. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, anything else? All right, I think we're all set, Kathy. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much, I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, thank you. Good night. Committee members, before we just talk about E, I mean, we talked about this last year between um, some of these big projects at the community center and Solomon Wells and all this stuff. And I don't know if there's something possible with all that big ticket items, you know, I'm doing the math here. It's, you know, you can spend a million dollars uh, on these projects. And obviously if, if we go our route, it'll take us forever. Is that, I think we asked this question last year, would the town considered coupling eight or 10 or 12 projects in, whether it's a million, two million and get everything done. Um, unless right now with the high school, we're still paying that loan. I don't know. Again, I don't know the, the math behind uh, the town's numbers, but I'm just curious, you know, take 10 or 12 items and couple them all in and get everything done. The nature center, the community, uh, this center, that Solomon Wells, the parking lot. Is that Derek, is that something that gets tossed around? We'll throw 10 or 12 items in under one thing. Cause if we go our route, you know, it's going to take us forever. I mean, then in the parking lot, you know, the parking lot situation, we can put a new one in now instead of repairing it um, while we're doing this. And like, to Tom's point, we can put some maybe some additional lighting when the parking lot's exposed. Just just a thought: is that something the town know goes down that road at all on doing a whole bunch of projects? Gary, do you want to weigh in? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's going to say I, I don't no. Know, I think that would be huge on. I'm just saying no. I don't want to weigh in. Um, <laughs> I, should punt, I should punt to Tom now and be like, Deputy Mayor, would you like to weigh in? Um, no, I you know I don't think there's anything wrong with having that discussion. Um, it's really about the, the appetite uh, to take it on. I mean, frankly, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be addressed within the town. Um, I would wanna try to approach the council with a balance of, you know, what, what, is, what is failing versus what are those items that are, you know, what needs versus wants. And I think your needs yeah. are probably gonna outweigh the wants. So I don't know where the community center ends up falling it may fall under the need depending upon the usage. Right now, the usage is obviously low and at a minimum. Um, we've, yeah. got a lot of, we've got a lot of buildings within town that are aged um, at the school level. So, I mean, I, I could bring it up at a council level. Um, uh, you know, I think I'd need a number to, to approach that. Um, mm -hmm. Looking at things that are starting to fall off um, I don't know, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember where we are and how many years are left on the uh, school, but obviously we just bonded for Keisha and there's going to be 10 years left there, 11 years left there. Um, I'm not saying you can wait 10 or 11 years, but obviously from a debt servicing standpoint, we want to try to keep that number low. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I we could probably compile the numbers and create a a needs versus wants or maybe something that's yeah. in between that might be both and you could as a CIAC you could you could make a recommendation for consideration um, and you could bring it to leadership for them to kick around okay all right I'll look uh, at the number but okay I'll all right comment also if you don't mind uh, so we have talked about it a little bit um problem you know I think Sally Katz really said it very well last week uh you know, we could spend millions of dollars fixing roofs and no one would even know we did it. And yep. uh, it's hard to hard to go to the taxpayers and say we want to spend, you know, 
six million or ten million dollars and you know you're not going to get a beautiful high school to look at or use you know you're basically maintaining what you already have and you know a lot of the infrastructure nobody even sees the heating systems or the roofs and it's a it's a tough sell so yeah i agree tom with you because if you put on a three hundred thousand dollar roof no one sees it but if you put a three hundred thousand dollar facade on a building it's like wow cool no, right. I agree. Maybe, maybe something to your point is that we take a whole bunch of items that are uh, seen by the eye, whether it's new siding and, uh, you know, new this, uh, anything that could, someone can walk and see a new building renovated, a new parking lot. Maybe we would consider doing those items and then we could take a lot of our other money here and put it towards the roof and the infrastructure that no one sees or no one talks about. And that's a yeah. good point. So, I mean, I, I'll play with some numbers and just present them to committee members, but we can, you know, do a 10 or 12 projects that people see, you know, whether it's painting this building, renovating this, renovating the parking lot, doing whatever. And then we save our money for the, for the things like you said, Tom, that never get recognized, but have to be addressed without the infrastructure. We have no town. So to, you know. to your point, John, and, and part of that conversation, the third option on, on your example is you could carve out a piece of your, CIP money and put that towards the debt, right? So rather than increasing the debt payment or having a separate debt payment, you reduce your 900,000. Problem is, you know, I, and it was my recommendation that I reduced it last year. Um, so the question yeah. is how long, how long can you do that before nothing moves forward? Um, but yeah. it is, you know, the thing, community center, as an example, you look at what does it generate for revenue? Could the revenue stream be diverted to the debt payment? You know, there, there's, there's a larger global picture you have to look at, but it, it is, it's a tough sell. Oh, I agree. I agree. If we're taking in a hundred dollars a month on that, then it's not worth to dump all that money into it. But I, yeah, is that, you know, does that get rented a lot? Uh, uh, there's the other, what's the other one? The old Solomon Wells, uh, does that get leased a lot? Yeah. Uh, is that the right, right name? Senior center, like programming that takes place at the senior center. I, I can say that I, although um, a number of them have left me alone in the last, six, eight months because of COVID, but I typically in the last year, the year prior, I was approached on a regular basis by a number of seniors saying, when are you going to fix the bathrooms? When are you going to address this? When are you okay. going to fix that? Okay. The heating system, the HVAC system, all of that stuff is outdated within the community center. People aren't going to rent it anymore if it keeps going. That the Rather doubt. Um, okay. Uh, but well, I do enjoy the group of seniors. Well, the other thing, too, is to appeal to people as consumers, right, of, of their own household budgets and repairs. Maybe show people what some of these repair costs are. Yeah, they don't see them, but once they see dollars, you know, um, that, that may be compelling enough to support um, some of these uh, the projects. Uh, and I agree on the community center. If it falls, continues to fall in disrepair, no one's going to want to rent it. And so there's kind of this economic development element as well to what we're talking here. Yep. So, um, so to look at in that regard, also the fields, you know, the fields bring people into town. They're heavily used. You have outside teams coming in. Um, I don't recall if they generate income or if they cost us more, but, um, but looking at fields as well, because they um, are constantly in, in play and, um, you know, drainage, uh, you know, that is, you know, that could even have legal, you know, ramifications in terms of lawsuits if people are getting injured, if the fields aren't um, in good shape. So, um, no. so I throw that out there. And then, you know, I know we'll talk about the different projects, but I think with the firehouse and what Rich presented, you know, we have a potential, um, you know, uh, Department of Labor, you know, lawsuit there, if you will, if, if we don't have parity in that facility for, um, for our female employees. So, um, you know, so we're going to have to look at that too. But those are just kind of my, my thoughts on nope. uh, but, but, but John, you know, you're, you're definitely, um, you know, thinking in the right direction on this, you know, you. Uh, yep. in terms Good. of these, these projects. So, 
yeah, um, I, I support whatever recommendations you, you bring forth as our chair. Thank you, thank you. All right, sorry for getting off the agenda a little bit, but I just want everyone to be aware where, where my head was. Um, all right, our next uh, item E, discussions of drainage, pavement, maintenance, and sidewalk needs. All right, everyone. Um, so starting off with drainage, um, priority rank number one was the town dam repairs. Uh, request is $50,000. Um, this is a project that's mandated from DEP Dam Safety Division. Uh, last year I had come in to you uh, with a request for $100,000. Uh, committee recommended $50,000 allocation and it ended up being reduced to $25,000 uh, at the town council level. So we do have some funds to, to put towards the consultant. Um, you may remember we did inspection reports back in 2016. We had a consultant uh, give us a report and there were these four dams in town, town owns nine, four of them required some minor repairs uh, that needed to ensure the dam embankment stability. So some of that work is uh, including removal of trees and stumps off the uh, earth embankments, erosion controls, uh, pipe joint repairs, things like that. So this request for $50,000 is uh, to be put towards the cost of whatever consultant fees we may have in excess of $25,000 for design and permitting of all four and also to, to begin construction. Uh, I would estimate this would allow us to at least get one of the four uh, locations done and up updated for safety needs. So you want 50K on, you're asking on this one? Okay. Yes. All right. <clears throat> uh, project number two is replacement of Copper Mill Road Culver over Goff Brook, preliminary design. Um, you haven't heard about this one before. This is a $20,000 request. Um, the state considers any culverts that span or have a total width of six to 20 feet to be bridges. So uh, we, we had gotten some funds from your, your committee previously and had a consultant go out and inspect seven bridges this year. Um, I did provide in my submittal the summary of those inspections. Uh, you'll see number one, as far as need is the Spring Street culvert. However, we were fortunate this year to get a million dollars in state grant and aid funds that can go towards that project. That's gonna be a larger project that's gonna address the drainage issues, but we're also gonna look at park amenity improvements as part of it. So I'm looking at the number two project that we need funding for, which is this one at Copper Mill Road. Um, this location has an estimated useful service life of less than 10 years. It was originally identified back in 1995 when the town had a consultant do a drainage study throughout the town. Um, it is undersized and is a flooding risk. That was the reason for replacing it at the time. At this point, we still have that issue and we also have some structural needs that need to be addressed um, to avoid. 20 grand finishes this project. This will get the design done. So what we're looking to go into is the state local bridge program. Okay. These bridges qualify. It's a 50-50 funding split between the state and the town. So working with our consultant, this would allow our consultant to do some preliminary engineering and get to a point where our application would be more competitive. Um, from what I understand from the program, it's very competitive. A lot of towns go for the money. Uh, so this would allow them to do some preliminary engineering and get the application prepared. So for the next solicitation, we can submit. They just had one a few months ago um, because of the fact we haven't gotten very far, you know, we haven't started really design yet. We held off on submitting, but we are hoping to um, submit for the next one that comes in. So that program only uh, funds 50% of culvert replacements. They don't fund rehab. Uh, I guess they used to, but with money being tighter now, they're just sticking with replacements. And I talked with the consultant about that for these various locations. This one in particular, um, rehab is, is possible. It will not address the flooding issue that was identified back in 1995 or the potential for flooding. Um, however, the lifespan on a rehab is about 25 to 30 years versus a replacement if we go with concrete materials. You know, if you look at 75 to 100 year uh, lifespan. So I think based on the fact that we can get 50% funding, uh, if we can be competitive in this program and the, and the uh, life of the project, it would be worth it to replace. And that was their recommendation as well. So this request is based on uh, the, the quote I got from Cardinal Engineering, uh, who's our consultant that did the bridge inspections to begin with for, from this past November. And uh, this work would cover at least getting us to an application to uh, try and get some of that state money. 
All right. Okay, number three is Tom Bridge Inspections, phase two. Um, you may remember you did give me some money to do initial inspections of uh, seven bridges that DOT had looked at or had screened and said we should do further investigations. Those were done and that, that was just discussed in the prior uh, item. So this is a request to inspect the additional, additional nine bridges that the town owns. Uh, we have six that fall into this local bridge category of six to 20 foot spans and we have three that are actually larger than that. Um, so the reasoning for this request is I'm looking to get a complete inventory of all our bridges and their conditions at this time. Um, that will help me going forward as far as defining what the requirements are at each location and prioritizing them. And then that will help me with, with CIP planning and identifying potential funding sources as we go forward. Um, these bridges, I, I don't know the last time they've been looked at, I really can't find any files on them. So I, this will give me a baseline to work from going forward uh, for preparing um, you know, what we need to do and what we need to be thinking about. So this request was based on a, another quote from November. Um, they had quoted it based on each culvert. And then there's sometimes a need for divers depending on how much uh, water flow there is there. I know when they did the first phase, they didn't need divers at a couple of the locations. So it's inflated a little bit to cover the cost of that if needed. All right. Okay, priority four is going back to the Copper Mill Road culvert of a Gough Brook. This is for final design and construction. Um, as we noted above, or as I stated with number two above, um, the culvert requires replacement and we're gonna go for state funding. Estimated cost of the project is, with design and construction is probably around $600,000. We'll need to come up with half of that. Um, this will begin to fund the, the town's portion of that request. I understand the discussions we've had about fully funding projects and trying to get some off the list. But being that that's a pretty large uh, dollar value, I'm, I'm trying to start early. Um, my understanding with the solicitations for state local bridge programs is that they will um, often be looking for us to have the money available pretty soon after they approve a project. Uh, you know, I got the sense from talking to them, maybe two or three years would be reasonable, but if we are at zero when we get approved, then it's gonna probably take us longer to get to that point. So this is to start funding that with the anticipation that this is gonna be our next highest priority and we're gonna to have to deal with it sooner than later. So that's what that request is related to. So 50 grand for that, okay. Okay, then going to pavement maintenance, uh, the first sorry, item sorry, before, before you move on, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm, John, I'm going to have to sign off. All righty. We'll and talk Mike, to you next right. Wednesday. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, yep. everyone. Thank you, All right. So for pavement maintenance, uh, road and parking lot, pavement evaluations, and asset management software is the highest priority on my list. It's a $50,000 request. As you know, serving as the Paving Advisory Committee, we typically evaluate our roads every five years. The last time we had done that was in 2016. The last time we had our parking lots all evaluated was back in 2002. Um, so this is the request we usually come in every five years looking to have our roads reevaluated. Um, they do change over time as far as conditions. And, it, and at this point, I'd, I'd like to get a new run of where we are so I can plan the programs going forward and also have that time in advance to coordinate with the utility companies ahead of our projects. Um, the same thing for the parking lots. We, if we can get a baseline on where we are now, we can have some priority schedule and work towards either obtaining funds if we can get them or CIP funding for where, where the needs are. Um, the request also includes an upgrade of uh, outdated road management software, um, which is no longer supported by the company um, to more of a cloud-based system uh, there are uh, newer asset management systems available that will do roads as well as traffic signs and sidewalks, which are a couple of other items that we do want to start uh, having a better handle on where we are with that. So those will be future requests, but this particular software or there's other options for software that do have modules for those types of um, assets, which I think will be beneficial. So that software could go for more than just roads and parking lots. We can use it for some of our other infrastructure. So the cost on that was based on some quotes I received from VHB um, from this past November and uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, so they're pretty current. Item number two, 
uh, you may remember from last year, this is Straddle Hill area road settlement. I uh, had explained to you last year that we have an issue up in this neighborhood with drainage and sanitary sewer trenches installed back in the 80s. Um, they're still settling throughout this neighborhood. It includes Straddle Hill, uh, Silo Drive, Willow Street, and some of the adjoining roads. Um, the settlement's causing potholes. It's a safety issue. Um, we have done some temporary repairs, but even those are starting to settle. Committee last year recommended $50,000 towards the project um, and ended up being $25,000. Um, at the town council level. Um, that will allow us to get a, at least get a consultant on board uh, to conduct some field testing and provide recommendations on how best to address the situation. You know, obviously we wanna address this before we get to paving the roads and they are coming up or I anticipate they'll be coming up in the next few years. So I need to identify what's going on out here and come up with some repairs before we get to that point. So uh, this funding request is really to start funding uh, construction in the area. Right now, Straddle Hill, the lower segment, maybe about 1,200 feet up from Willow Street and Scott's Way, which is off it, is the worst area. That's where I get the most complaints from residents. Um, I usually am getting every couple months at least somebody complaining from that neighborhood about the conditions out there. So that's the worst one, and that's the one I'd probably attack first as far as getting it repaired and then getting uh, the road restored or repaved sooner than later. Um, and then as far as the other areas, I think we talked a little bit about this. I don't really have a good handle on what the total repair cost is going to be. So this is really just focus on Straddle Hill, Silo Drive, and some of the other areas. We need the consultant to look at it and really give us some recommendations on what they think is going to work the best. I have some thoughts. I think we can do it at a reasonable cost, but it might be something that we have to phase. This would be considered phase one of the neighborhood, and then we'll look at some of the other areas in, in future years. I live actually off of, uh, well, I live on windmill, so I do drive around and see these roads. Is there any settlement issues or any issues with the homeowners' lots? Is it just the roads? Well, um, you know, the lots haven't had this problem, and it's, it's really restricted to the pipe trenches. Um, sanitary sewers, if you drive over them down the middle of the road, the whole settle, center of the road, the center of the patch where the pipe is, is, is settling across the whole length. Okay. It's a little different. You can see there's potholes forming every eight to 10 feet. MDC had TV their pipes last year. I TV'd our pipes. Pipes look fine. There's no evidence of joint separation or things like that, that we were expecting. Um, in talking with MDC and some of our consultants, I mean, the thought is we've had some very high groundwater situations out there lately. And uh, thinking that the material they might have used back in the eighties for backfill is, is not, adequate. So between the high groundwater and the material that's out there, we got to come up with some way of, of stabilizing so it doesn't continue to settle. So that's something we'll look at. And as I said, we do have the funds for the consultant. I just need, I'm going to need the funds to do the work. You think they buried 20,000 trees on a, on a <laughs> Well, if they did it every eight to 10 feet, maybe. Um, the rest of the roads are, are fine. It's really just over those two utilities. So okay. you know, MGC, I'm still in conversations with them. Um, you know, they may have some liability in this too. And uh, I just need to, at this point, I want to get to, you know, what needs to be done and then we can figure that out with them. Okay. So you have 25 and you need another 25 basically. To well, the roll. request is for 50. Um, right now, I don't know what the Straddle Hill area repair is going to cost. Oh, we haven't had to okay. okay. evaluate yet. Um, I expect that would cover it. If there was anything left over, it would go towards the rest of the neighborhood that's going to need it. Okay, good. Project number three uh, is traffic sign inventory. Um, the request is $25,000. This is a mandated project. Uh, you may remember from last year in June 2014, a Federal Highway Administration required municipalities to implement an asset management system for traffic signs um, that's intended to ensure we have proper retro reflectivity for nighttime driving, that the signs are bright enough, they're properly sized. Right now, we don't have a formal asset management system. Uh, we have approximately 3,500 signs in town, so it's a good number of them. So this request is retain a consultant to conduct some field data collection. They go to each sign, they locate the signs, they give us dimensions, the retro reflectivity, and then that way we can use that to better manage the system. Um, Initially, it'll give us an overview of how much we need to do, and then we can figure out what we need to do and how many years it'll take to do it. Um, so that is really a mandated requirement. We just haven't met it yet. Um, they will also develop the database for us. So we would either manage it in GIS 
or if there was a way I could, you know, if I end up being able to get that software that we're going to use, or I'd like to use for the pavement management, we can also do sign management with it as well. So, oh, okay, okay, you know, either that software, or we can manage it in our GIS databases as well. Okay, item number four, you've seen a number of times, police department parking lot expansion. Um, Chief Cetrin required uh, requested that I submit it again this year. It's a twenty-five thousand dollar project. You may remember police department historically been used for seminars and meetings pre-COVID. Um, there's not enough parking when, when they had these. So attendees often had to park at the ShopRite Plaza to the north. So this request is to construct eight new parking spots in the front of the uh, facility to provide some additional parking on site. Um, the cost is estimated based on it being done by our on-call contractor, not a bid project. Um, so I, I told him I would come in and uh, submit that as well. So that wraps up pavement maintenance. Um, sidewalks this year, it's, it's one item. The, the usual item I come in for, for the sidewalk ramps and detectable warning tiles. This year, the request is $65,000. Um, as we've talked in the past, this is a mandate and a safety issue. Uh, Federal Highway Administration and US Department of Justice requires us to upgrade sidewalk ramps that adjoin uh, any new pavement that's installed. They got to meet ADA standards. Um, so in recent years, we've been doing that ahead of our paving programs to update the walks and the, and the ramps adjoining them. I typically have been requesting $50,000. That's usually what historically you've allocated. Last year, I only requested $25,000 because I uh, felt that based on the work we need to do, I didn't need the full 50. This year, it's a little bit higher because looking at the programs that we have coming up at the fall and spring of 2022, I estimate there's going to be um, enough ramps that I need to increase it a little bit to the $65,000. In addition, it includes some work. Um, you, you may or may not be aware the town is currently developing a uh, bike ped plan that will include safety improvements where we need, we're gonna prioritize projects that need these types of improvements, ramp improvements. So there's some a little bit of money in there to, for that. And we also right now have some UConn students that are doing evaluations. They're doing safety evaluations at 14 different intersections in town. Um, they're looking at signage, uh, pavement markings across, and uh, crosswalks and uh, ramps as well. So um, based on what might come out of their study, there's a, there's a little bit of funding in there for that also. Okay. Any questions for Derek? All righty. Thank you. Um, moving on to item F and the old business uh, we need to go over. All right. So, no. All right. And item G. So we are on for X Wednesday, 5 p.m. Um, I assume, Derek, we've done meeting with everyone and talking to everyone. It's time to crunch the numbers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, next week I'll pull up the spreadsheet and uh, you know we'll go through our, through the normal process, go line by line, and okay, yep, perfect, perfect. All right, all right, sounds good. Uh, we'll go to item H. Is adjournment? Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting on January twenty seventh? So moved. Second it, please. Second. Excellent, excellent. All right, everyone, thank you very much, and we'll see you uh, next Wednesday at five. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good Thanks night. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Good night.